This is my first uh, 290 lab practical uh, demonstration, I suppose, where I'm doing a fire vortex. Uh, I'm going to show how I did all of this. Uh, first things first, I put down a grid object. I just hit it from view, so that way it wasn't in my way when I was trying to look at the vortex itself. itself. Um, it's just a basic grid. Nothing really changed. Ten rows, ten columns. Size is a bit increased, but whatever. Uh, it's just the same old, same old. Uh, from there, I went into particle systems and sourced particles from that grid. Uh, to get the source particles and to create the auto dot network. Um, following that, I needed to make a fuel source for the fire. If I'm going to make a fire vortex, I need a fuel source. So I made a fuel source out of the particle system. First things first, I did a particle fluid surface, which turns which turns the things into, or the particles into 3D sort of voxels, so they have a volume. And I turn those volumes uh, into fluid source uh, and source fuel. And I turned off visualization for velocity because uh, even in streamers, it looks awful and, st and stupid. And even if it was smoke, um, it would still it would still be just in the way and annoying to deal with. Uh, after that, I just clicked the, uh, the fluid source here and went into pyro effects and did smokeless flames. I didn't really want to have smoke with my, um, with my fire vortex. I just wanted you know, just the fire portion, so I just did smokeless flames. Uh, and, it, and it gave me the sort fuel volumes to give, um, to give the uh, attributes to the voxels and particles and fuel and transfer that with the fuel moving into uh, the auto dot network where the pyro solver was placed in and here's the out fuel and then the render node that just gets placed in so the auto dot network what I did uh, one thing I did change I made the uh, uh, this is just the basic particle system it gives you. I added a pop axis force and increased the orbit speed and suction speed so it looks kind of it looks a lot more like a tornado rather than uh, just sort of spinning particles in an area. Also because uh, if the orbit speed is too low you won't see it because gravity is pulling down on it too fast so increasing it to three gives it a sort of faster rotation and the suction speed uh, makes it so it um, sort of suctions towards this white axis here uh, faster and faster and if it, and you can have that at zero and it won't do anything it'll just spin around uh, the axis in uh, with the same radius as where it was to begin with but the suction speed pulls it in um, and other than that I didn't change this too much well, I did actually. I dropped the const, uh, consistent birth rate to 800 particles uh, per frame and the life expectancy to three seconds. I, the, I only have 100 frames in my render, and so three seconds in a 24 uh, second render, if I toggle real time, would be 72 seconds. And so life expectancy is uh, three seconds. So they don't go on forever. They just go on for a little bit and die off. And I also didn't want to completely crash my computer. So I just did 800 particles. And 800 particles was perfectly fine to get a decent voxel or a 3D shape with a volume uh, to uh, show, um, to get it to show up. In fact, I can actually show you the... Uh, I can actually show this sort of 3D voxel. I've already modeled some of it. You can see the fire there as well, but you can uh, mostly here for the for the voxels, this sort of 3D shape going on. And the fire you can see is also there. I'm gonna show that a bit later, but um, it's fine if it shows now. Hitting out fuel, you just see the fuel kind of mixed in, which at first, I was kind of skeptical about, but it kind of looks cool. Um, it won't really show up in the render, though, so whatever. 
Um, going back to the auto adopt network and the pyro solver, which is what I want to talk about next. Um, I didn't change a bunch um, with the pyro solver. I, I messed with buoyancy lift and I kept cooling rate at default because I didn't want, because I, I already kind of liked how it strings off um, like this, which is interesting. It took me a few tries to sort of get this to actually show up. Um, I changed very little and it ran and it would randomly work and then it randomly wouldn't. It was weird. Um, but messing with the buoyancy lift, it took me a while, but I was able to finally get sort of this not, uh, the fire not rising up too much from like, it's the origin of the particles, but also, uh, so it could come down and other than that, I didn't mess with it with much. I kept a scale velocity at one. You need to do this or else fire part of like the fuel won't really have the velocity. And so even though the particles are moving, the fuel doesn't move with it. So you'll just kind of have fuel sitting up here at the top, um, which is pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> Obviously, you're not going to have the vortex show up. Uh, there were other instances where even though this was at one, the fire wouldn't follow it. And it took me quite a while to bug fix it. And even then, I still think that I just found like a random workaround that it just happened. And I don't know <laughs> exactly what I changed because it didn't seem any like anything uh, really mattered. I kept clam to max bounds on. It doesn't necessarily matter. The max bounds were large enough. Also, it helps with um, if, you're, if your life expectancy of your... Uh, of your particles are too is too long the fire will die even though your particles continue so that is my fire vortex and how i s sort of put it together um again i've had a f i had a few problems with it uh i'm pretty sure i could replicate it though again later uh, if i wanted to but it took me it like it's one out of every five even though i changed nothing and it's weird because it's computer simulation but uh, that is my first, that is my fire vortex lab practical.